Hey guys, so in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about fast hands. So an area of sometimes confusion is exactly what we're trying to do with the hands in the golf swing. And hopefully this video will really kind of help you guys understand the do's and the don'ts. And maybe the reason why when we're watching the pros, things look the way they do in terms of speed. So the first thing that we have to understand is the concept of width. We need to make sure that in this backswing position in particular, that the hands are away from my body. If my hands get too close to my body in this backswing position, then you are fundamentally losing a big, a, a big applicator of force. Now, a decent sort of analogy would be if you imagine like the old Indiana Jones films, you know, when the walls are coming in, you really want to feel like you're standing in a position where you are going to be able to push that, that wall back, theoretically. So hopefully you understand the point. But if I kind of get my hands too close to me, so I'm sort of standing here like so, then I'm just going to get squashed up. So the first thing to understand is width. Now, I think the best way to sort of practice getting into a better position where you can apply width is to understand the functionality of your trail hand. So in the backswing position, you want to make sure that you feel that you're demonstrating a backswing position where this hand is going to have that ability to push that wall away from you. And then when you swing the club, you want to get yourself into that same position where can you see the way that my palm, so I'm making sure that my trail palm is really pushing that left arm into a straight position. So that gives us width, which will obviously give us speed because obviously the wider that club is, the faster theoretically you're gonna be able to swing it. But also it adds an additional force in there. So as opposed to somebody who would sort of swing back like so, if I've got somebody who's swinging back where they're really pushing and they're pushing that club away and they're pushing it down and they're pushing it through, that's gonna be a massive con contributor to additional force. So the first one to understand is width. Easiest way to practice it, trail palm, is it in contact with your left thumb? Is it feeling like it's pushing the club away from you? Do you feel an element of activation in and around your lead arm? If you do, then that means that you're applying force. If you don't, then that would be the first thing to start practicing. Second thing would be as you start the downswing or even a little bit in your backswing position, you need to move towards your lead side. So I'm somebody who likes to see my students in particular sort of move a little bit towards their lead side in the backswing position. And the main reason for this is most amateur golfers underestimate how much movement you need in towards that lead side. But for the benefit of this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus our attention on the start of the downswing, so roughly when my left arm is horizontal to the floor in this position here. And if that's my setup position, I'm like so, and then can you see the way that I'm moving my lower body more towards that lead side as I initiate the downswing, and I'm also triggering rotational motion. Now, what this does, if I sort of just take my uh, right hand off the club, if I sort of take the club back like so, and then like so, you can see as I start this downswing, by simply focusing on sort of rotating and moving towards my lead side, like so. You can see the way that this moves my shoulder. So as my left shoulder is moving, as I start the downswing, it sort of moves down initially and around, that's what moves the hands. So one of the reasons why the hands move a lot between the top of the backswing and the start of the downswing is because that's when the pros are rotating at their fastest. Okay, so if I don't really rotate from this position and just bring my arms theoretically down, then I'm not saying that won't generate speed, but that's going to produce a wider sort of hand path. If I move towards that lead side, it gets the hands moving in, which is going to produce more speed. So you think about throwing a ball, you'd sort of do the same thing. You wouldn't just stand there and do this. You'd sort of progressively move towards your lead side. And that's one of the big contributors. So if you theoretically have good width and good arm structure, where you're applying a nice force to keep that club nice and straight, similar to what I'm demonstrating here, well, if you can contribute then a nice rotation in transition where you're moving progressively to your lead side, that's going to help the hands come more in, which is massively going to be a big contributor to speed. Now, there's something else which will play a big role in what the hands are doing at the start of the downswing, and it's this arm here. As I swing back, if I do right hand only now, you can see the way that I have got myself into a position where I'm keeping that club nicely away from my body. But as I start the downswing, what I also need to do is I need to make sure I've still got that feeling where I'm applying that pressure to the outside of the club similar to this. However, this doesn't want to be moving away from my body. Okay, so you can see the way that my upper arm needs to move down to the side of my body. So if you can now imagine that I've got all of those three things happening, I've got my hands applying nice width away from me in the backswing, and then I've got this nice movement towards that lead side as I start the downswing, whilst I also then allow my upper arm to move to the side of my body. And all of those sort of three things are going to really help generate a lot of speed, particularly in the start to the downswing. 
So as I've spoken about a lot, the reason why I started this video on the idea of width is that this arm needs to be applying pressure outwards, okay? Like so. So I'm not saying that I want to start my downswing like this, but what I'm saying is that I don't want to necessarily have this moving away. This has to move to the side of my body as the relationship between my upper and lower arm widens, and that helps me really whip that club through, and it's a massive part. So if we can get those three pieces together, good width, good movement to the lead side, let the upper arm move to the side of your body, all of a sudden those hands are going to start to be generating a lot of speed. In this position, if I just continue to sort of move into my lead side and keep my head still, what will then start to happen is it will help me trigger like if you uh, like a thrusting motion, like an upward motion. But there's also going to have to be an element of consciousness there. So hypothetically, if we've able to sequence a backswing position and a downswing where we're nicely over the golf ball, this is going to give us the freedom to just get that feeling of, you know, sort of pushing off that lead leg and then straightening those arms coming in towards the through swing. And that's going to obviously be that sort of final piece to the puzzle. So we need to make sure we get all of those things in sequence. And if we do, we'll end up with a golf swing, which will look something similar to what I'm going to demonstrate now, which is nice wide arms in the backswing position as we then start the downswing, progressively moving towards the lead side into this type of position here. OK, so this hand is pushing that into the nice and straight position. I've got this arm moving to the nicely to the side of my body. So if I'm here now, this really lends itself to me being able to get up through the golf ball. That means that left shoulder is moving again, even further back and around, which will help me whip that club through. And then that's obviously going to move that club through the golf ball. So when it comes to that last part of the golf swing, the easiest way to do this is just do a lead hand only swing. OK, so turn the club upside down, take the weight out of the club and just literally sort of just get that feeling of moving your chest up towards the target, similar to what I'm doing here. Try and focus on not allowing your head to move towards your target, your head stays still. And then that just allows my arms to really whip through like so. OK, and that's going to generate a huge amount of speed. So with inside this video, I'm not suggesting that, you know, if you're somebody who likes to really get the feeling of, you know, moving the arms in a certain way at the start of the downswing, that's fine. You know, there are different ways in which we swing the golf club. There are certain pros, you know, Sergio Garcia comes to mind where his arms really drop as he starts the downswing position. There are other examples of golfers where the hands work further out. You've got choices here. What I always try to do on the channel is I try to focus very much on the functionality. So what really are all of the pros doing? And what all of the pros are doing are similar to what I've spoken about in this video. They are applying width. They are moving to the lead side. They are moving the upper arm to the side of the body. And then they are getting out of the way, extending out the way, similar to what you'll experience if you do this exercise, like so. And if you can obviously put all of those things together, what will then happen is you'll produce a lovely sequence. And what tends to happen when we look at things that have a nice sequence is it doesn't look like the hands are moving very fast, although ultimately they are because they're being manipulated by all of the things that I've mentioned in today's video. So effortless speed is going to come from a nice looking sequence. But the way you're going to get that sequence is by understanding those individual components and just practicing them. So what I work on with my students all the time is I'll have a look at their golf swing. I'll sort of figure out which part I think that they're missing and they need to spend a bit of time practicing. And that's what we do. We just work on either widening, rotating, or this extension side and practicing that as well. They all have huge merit and a huge part of the golf swing. See you guys soon.